We're going to start by searching for Office 365 Enterprise Trial. And the result here is a Microsoft site that shows Office 365 Enterprise E3. E3 stands for a particular plan of Office 365, Enterprise 3. Here we'll follow a link to free trial and provide the information requested. And for the company name, I'm going to put Pilot House ABC. ABC University is going to be the name that we use throughout the course. On the next page, I'm going to create a username for myself. And so my username is going to be pilothouseabc.onmicrosoft.com. And here's the full username. Later, it's possible to add your own domain. But right now, we're just going to use the default domain that Microsoft provides for us. And you can see that that's our user. That's the page from which we can access all of Office 365 information. And we're ready to go. So we can bookmark the page. This is going to be our username. So you can write that down so that you remember it. And of course, make sure to write down your password as well. Now, what you can see here is that majority of the applications that we're going to be using, such as SharePoint, it's in a process of being set up. I can already access the administrative site. But first, what I'll do is also start the installation of Office, which will give us Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, as well as InfoPath. So let's click Install. And this is going to install Office. We're going to click Next. Click on User Recommended Settings. What we can also do is sign in into the Office with our account to make sure that it's connected to our Office 365 account. So that's our username. And here's the password. And in the meantime, we're just going to let Office install in the background. If you scroll down, you could see that majority of the apps have been now set up. And what I'll do is just go to the admin app. And this is the Office 365 administration interface. And it shows us that Exchange, Office 365 Portal, SharePoint, Skype for Business, Yammer, Enterprise, all of those have been set up for us. In fact, we can access the admin sites of each one through this admin section. But before I go to SharePoint administration, Let's create some users. As you can see, there is only one user right now. And we can add one user at a time. Or we can import a number of users. I'm going to select a file off the sample documents. And we'll create a number of users. So there's going to be 20 users that we're creating. And we're going to set the location for all those users. And notice that we have 25 licenses, or actually 24 licenses, available. And for each user, we're going to assign all the licenses. So they'll have access to SharePoint to Office Online, to Skype for Business, to Office 365 Pro Plus, which is the Office Professional, as well as Exchange. 
and the email with all the passwords is going to go to me. So you can see that all the users were created, and we have some temporary passwords. And I'm going to save this information so I can use it later. So let's just put in a note that. And save it on the desktop. So you can see that there's quite a few users now. And for each user, we're able to do quite a few options. For example, for Claire, right now, Claire is just a regular user. But if we wanted to, we could promote Claire either to a global administrator, or we could give her a specific limited role, such as SharePoint administrator in which case she wouldn't have access to the entire Office 365 administration, just the SharePoint administration. But for right now, it will suffice just to have one user that has full access to everything. Now let's scroll down, and let's click on SharePoint. And you can see that a new tab opened up. And we're going to expand the address bar so that you can see that the URL is pilothouseabc-admin.sharepoint.com. So that's the default URL for the SharePoint Admin Center within Office 365. And since we're getting warned to, to set the time zone, let's make sure that we set the time zone while we're here. I'm choosing Pacific and then click and Save. Well, the warning took us outside from, from the admin app. How do we get back to the admin app? We can either go the long way by clicking on the app launcher, admin, then scroll down and click on SharePoint. Or we could just easily remember this URL or bookmark this URL and then go back to it whenever necessary. You can see in the SharePoint Admin Center, there's a number of site collections that were created for us. And we're going to use this default site collection, pilothouseabc.sharepoint.com. So that's usually your company name or your organization name, .sharepoint.com. I'm going to go to the site collection. And you can see that it's a default team site. So it's Pilot House ABC team site. And what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to verify a few settings. So we're going to go to site settings. And if you look around, if you're familiar with SharePoint, you'll notice that there is a section missing here called Web Designer Galleries. Currently, there is a little bit of an issue of a tenant setup within Microsoft. So what we'll do in order to get the full functionality, we're going to make a few changes to our uh, within SharePoint Admin Center. So we're going to go back to SharePoint Admin Center, click on Settings. In Settings, we'll allow users to run custom script on personal sites. Then we'll delete the site collection that was created for us automatically. And once we delete it, we'll recreate it again. So to recreate that site collection, we're going to click on New, Private Site Collection. And for the title, I'm going to use ABC University. For the template selection, we can either use Team Site or we can use Team Site SharePoint Online Configuration. Either one will work. 
For the administrator, I'm going to put my own name in here. I will allocate three gigabytes to the site collection and 3,000 in resources. And then click OK. And I actually expect to get an error once I click OK. So we're going to say permanently delete the site collection. And then when we click OK, and you could see that our site collection is being created right now. So you could see that it took about a little over 10 minutes for, for the site collection to be created again. Again, that time depends on the time of the day that you were doing it or whether there was a previously deleted site collection. Now we can click on our new site collection. And we're going to go to Site Settings. And you're going to see a little difference. There is Web Designer Galleries. And just to compare to previously created site collection, so this is the one that was created by Microsoft by default. Notice that there is no Web Designer Galleries. And we'll need those in a, in a course. Plus, there are other effects when those galleries are not enabled. Also, you might see a slightly another slight difference is that here it just says home, whereas here it says ABC University because we already gave the name to the site collection. Now, the last thing that we want to do is go to Internet Options within Internet Explorer, go to Security, Trusted Sites, and make sure that pilothouseabc.sharepoint.com is within our trusted sites.